Hi, and thank you for joining. Thank you for joining in tonight. If you're on already, I would like for you to click, tag, and share. Go ahead and share if you're on already. Make sure you share with someone. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Our topic is going to be hot tonight, so make sure you share with someone. Make sure you do that now. Be sure to click, tag, and share. Tonight, we're going to be talking about they don't know me, so why they don't like me? They don't know me, so why they don't like me? Make sure you go ahead and click, tag, and share. Click, tag, and share. They don't know me, so why they don't like me? Make sure you share that tonight. Make sure you share. Hi, Miss Allison. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for sharing, Candice. They don't know me. So why they don't like me? They don't even know me. Thank you for sharing. Make sure you share tonight. Make sure you are sharing. Thank you for joining our sold out. This is our second broadcast. So thank you for joining us. Hi, Christian. Thank you for joining tonight. As people are coming in, again, make sure you click tag and share. We want to get the word out. As people are coming in, we're going to go ahead and pray so we can get started. Father, we thank you. For tonight, we thank you for allowing us this platform. We thank you for meeting us here. We thank you for every person that will click. We thank you for every person that will tag. We thank you for every person that will share. Father, we thank you for imparting your word unto us tonight, dear God. We thank you for the favor that is upon our life. We thank you for being your chosen vessel. We thank you for being the apple of your eye, your chosen people, your remnant. We thank you for blessing us in this pandemic. We thank you for the breakthroughs that is coming our way. We thank you for the open doors the open open portals. We thank you for all that you are doing, all you are going to do, dear God. We thank you for pouring us out blessings that we don't even have room enough to receive. We thank you for giving us favor, not only with you, but favor with men. We thank you, oh God, for all that you are doing in this season. We thank you for the eighth month. We thank you for new beginnings, dear God. We thank you in advance for the outpouring, oh God, we thank you for anointing our hands to do the work. We thank you for anointing our eyes to see what we need to do. We thank you for our ears being able to hear what we need to hear in this season, oh God. We thank you for the abundance, oh God. In your name we pray and we do thank you, oh God. In Jesus' name, we thank you, oh God. Okay, so we're going to jump right in tonight. So as I was preparing this, the Lord began to deal with me about this favor that he has given us, his people, his chosen people. And why is it that sometimes we have, we wrestle with how we go in places and in different arenas and when we meet people, suddenly they don't like us or they have an issue with we just walk up and they just like, and they give us this look or there's just this thing about us and they, you go to shake their hand or you go to speak and they give us this look like and we didn't even do anything I didn't say nothing to you and all of a sudden you looking at me some type of way and I haven't done anything I didn't say nothing to you <laughs> I'm just being me and all of a sudden you don't like me you don't even know me and you don't like me and and it's, and then we encounter this at different times and, and we don't understand why because we didn't do anything to, to receive this type of reaction from people but we sometimes we look at ourselves like, well, what did I do? And the Lord began to deal, deal with me. And he said, tell my people, you didn't do anything. And I'm like, what do you mean? He said, tell them they didn't do anything. You're in good company. I'm like, they're in good company. And I'm thinking, you know, sometimes we'll think, well, I must, maybe it was something I said. And we try to reflect back and we look at ourselves. Well, maybe it was something I did. Maybe, maybe they heard something about my past. Maybe it's, the way I look, and we try to look at ourselves, and the Lord say, no, why are you looking at yourself? Quit always thinking you did something. You didn't do anything, and he started dealing with me about this, and I said, okay, 
And so I began to go back through the word. He said, he said, tell them, he said, they can go in different situations and immediately they will begin to think that they're the ones that's wrong. And I said, that is true. He said, you can be in a situation. He said, you can be in a church like three months. You only been there three months. They don't know you. How can you assume that you're the one that's wrong? They don't know you yet. They, ha they, don't, they haven't been around you long enough to know you. He said, you can be dating someone. They can introduce you to someone. You've been only dating them five weeks and immediately they family don't even know. They don't even like you. <laughs> you only been dating a person five weeks. He said, have you ever met someone and you walked that you got ready to shake their hand, shake the other person's hand and immediately they don't even want to shake your hand. You just met them. He said, so how can you assume that you did something wrong? And I'm like, okay, Lord, that is very true. He said, they don't even know you. They haven't been in your presence long enough to know you. So how are you assuming that you're the one wrong? He said, okay, you introduce your girl or your boys to someone and they'll be like, it's just something about them that ain't right. And I'm like, yeah, that, that has happened. He said, that's not holy discernment. <laughs> I said, what? He said, yeah, because this is some of your church, your church friends. He said, this is some of your church people now. And I'm like, okay, here we go. He said, that is not holy discernment. He said, understand this. He said, holy discernment is wisdom and understanding that is empowered by the Holy Spirit in all matters. In 1 Kings 3, when the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and asked him to name whatever he desired, Solomon pleased God by asking for the spirit of discernment. Solomon's word were, so give your servant a discerning heart, heart to govern your people and to distinguish, listen to this, to distinguish between right and wrong. Not it's just something about them that ain't right. That's not distinguishing between right and wrong. Solomon's request for discernment pleased the Lord so much that God not only gave Solomon a wise and discerning heart, but he also gave him what he didn't even ask for. He gave him wealth and honor. That's how much his request pleased God, my God. So in the New Testament, Paul prayed that believers would have and apply the spirit of discernment. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound. This is what Paul said, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. That's Philippians 1, 9 through 10. But what I'm referring to is they don't like me. <laughs> they just don't like you. That is not discernment. We talking about people just don't like you. You haven't done anything to them. You've been nice. You simply walked up on the scene like Jesus did. You just walked up on the scene. You literally walked in the room and they just don't like you. Flat out, they don't like you. Jesus was not like, Jesus was not liked just like we are. So let's look at this. From day one, a hit was put out on Jesus' life. Listen to this. King Herod, this is Matthew 2, 16. The, Jesus wasn't even a year old and he wasn't even liked. <laughs> Here we go. He wasn't even liked. Fast forward. Jesus, Jesus gets into his ministry. He only lives on the earth for 33 years and he is hated for no reason. When he was born, Herod put out a hit on his life. He's a baby. Kill all the male babies. I don't like him. Kill him. Kill him. Not liked. You're, so what is, what is he saying? You're in good company. They didn't like Jesus either. Get over it. They didn't like me. I was on the earth 33 years. They didn't like me. So guess what? They're not going to like you either. 
and they're never going to like you. Watch this. Watch this. Yet people are healed everywhere Jesus went. They were healed. They were set free. They were delivered. Miracle after miracle after miracle. Guess what? They didn't like him. And we made it because they don't like me. I ain't do nothing wrong. And we made it. They don't like me. We got an attitude because people don't like us. We're in churches because people don't like us. And we're mad. We're leaving churches because people don't like us. Yet Jesus walked around doing miracles, raising people from the dead. And they didn't like him. And Jesus was like, and? So y'all don't like me? And I still got work to do. I'm still going to raise the dead. I'm still going to heal the sick. That you're blind, I'm still going to open your eyes. And they still don't like me. And they're still going to like me. They're never going to like me. Jesus walked on the scene. Jesus walked on the scene. The demons started crying out. Jesus didn't even, I ain't even bothering y'all. What y'all hollering for? <laughs> y'all are hollering and making all this noise. And all I did was walk up. Why are you, demons, why are you coming to torment me? All I did was walk on the scene, but yet we're walking around getting mad because people don't like us. We're leaving, we're leaving churches because don't nobody in here like me. We're getting mad because people in here don't like us. Really? Really? You're getting mad because I'm raising the Auburn and I'm taking too long. Really? I don't care. They didn't like Jesus and he was raising this. He was raising the dead. And they were and they did not like him. OK, let's go. All right. So miracles after miracle after miracle. Nobody is wondering if he's a wonder. He is a wonder and they still don't like him. How do you not like a person that is working miracles? They still don't like him. They still don't like him. They don't like him, but we're going to I'm going to leave this church because nobody here likes me. I'm going to leave this church because they won't let me leave my favorite song. All right. So they don't like Jesus. Jesus was simply walking on the scene, minding his business. And they are and they yell out, why are you here tormenting us? You know, was you do you really want to know what was happening? They did. It wasn't Jesus, the person. Jesus, the Jesus in him was agitating their demons. That's the problem. And what, what, what is God saying? What we really need to, what we really need to realize, it's not you that they're mad at. It's them deemed, it's the spirit in you that's agitating their demons. That's what they really don't like. They don't want to come out and say it. <laughs> they don't want to come out and say, you know what's really, you know what I really don't like about you? It's that God in you that I don't like. That's what I really don't like. What I really don't like about you is that favor that's on your life. What I really don't like about you is that you're really blessed. What I really don't like about you is every time I see you, you coming out on top. That's what I really don't like about you. What I really don't like about you is that every time you go through, you come out on top again. What I really don't like about you is every time I see you, you can get breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. What I really don't like about you is every time I hear you sick, you keep coming out healed. That's what I really don't like. But they don't want to say that. <laughs> what they want to say, but what they're going to say is, it's just something about her. She just thinks she all that. She just keep talking about seeds all the time. She just thinks she all that. She just bougie. No, I'm just blessed. Just call it what it is. <laughs> don't say you don't like a person. Just say, you know what? You just real blessed. I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. You just blessed. I ain't even mad at you. I ain't even mad at you. Just, just call the person blessed. Just say what it is. The next time somebody just, just they just need to come out and say, you're just really, really blessed. <laughs> you're just favored of the Lord. You're just favored of the Lord. If you really think about it, if, if, a, if a person, have you ever met a person where down the road, they'll, they'll eventually come around and say, you know I, I used to didn't, couldn't understand you, but now you're pretty cool. Now what you're really saying is you didn't like me. That's what you really want to say. You didn't like me, but now you know me. You think I'm okay. 
Now you don't got to know me. Now, now I'm okay. <laughs> now I'm okay. But before you thought I was some type of way, or you heard something about my, you heard something about me, and now you really got to know me for yourself. And now you think I'm now you now you say okay, yeah, she okay, she pretty cool. But before you didn't really know me, you you thought you knew me, but now you really know me. Okay, let's just call it what it is. Amen. So what do I do when they don't like me? What do I do when they don't like me? Because we, we, we've read the scriptures that say turn the other cheek. But how many of y'all going to turn, turn the other cheek and let them slap the other one? I'm not. Let's be real. The prophet is not. I'm not turning the other cheek. I'm not turning the other cheek. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm not there yet. Matthew 5, 38 through 39 says, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a two for a two. But I tell you to resist an evildoer. On the contrary, whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other to him as well. First Thessalonians 5 and 15. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. First Peter 3, 8 through 10 says, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one for, a, one, a, one for another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, evil or railing for railing, but, con but contrise blessing knowing that knowing that ye are called to that ye should inherit a blessing for he that will love life and see good days let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile romans 12 and 17 do not repay anyone evil for evil be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone this is when we find out I tried to be nice. We, we say I tried to be nice, but they trying me. What, what is all this is saying is don't repay evil for evil. Don't try to get evil. Don't try to pay people back. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He can repay far greater than we ever can. Let him deal with them. Because when you try to deal with, it, deal with people, it moves him out the way. If you're going to do, if you're going to take care of them, he'll, he'll let you go ahead and handle it then. If you think you can handle it better than he can. And trust me, you can't, you can't do, give the vengeance better than God can. Because if you're going to take care of it, it moves him out the way. Because there's no better teacher than him and life. life God and life is the two best teachers. You can't repay like he can. I'm not going to turn the other cheek and let you and let you hit me on it, but I let God deal with you. That's one thing I will do. I'm not, I'm not going to go back and forth with you um, about nothing. I'll let God deal with you. He's the best teacher. And I'm going, not going to pay you evil for evil because I don't want, I don't want the repercussions of that myself. I'll let him deal with you because he, he can judge and deal with you better than I ever can. And I, t and I'm quick to tell you, I'm going to turn you over to God. And, and I will let people know when you mess with me because I'm his girl, he going to deal with you. I, and I, I tell people all the time, I absolutely believe I'm his favorite. And when you don't mess with me, he will deal with you. He will deal with you. There's no vengeance like the vengeance of God. First John 4 and 8 says, anyone who does not love, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. First John 4, 4. You are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. First John 2, 14. Stay strong, study the word of God, and God will abide in you. And you will continue to overcome the evil one. Revelation 3, 16. So because you are, if you are lukewarm, this is what happened when you try to say, I'm holy, holy, holy. Then now I'm going to get you back. <laughs> So you can't, you have to decide which side you're going to be on. When you start doing all that, you lukewarm. And this is what, this is what others love to call the church on. Oh, I thought you were saved. Now, now you're going to try to get them back. And see, this is when, they, so this is when the world say, they, they want to do all kinds of stuff. And then when we step out and we get you back, 
Then this is when they want to call you on it. And this is when they want to say, now you lukewarm. And this is where they get the scripture from. That's Revelation 3.16. So because you are lukewarm, you're neither hot nor cold. I will spew you out of my mouth. This is why you need to stay consistent to who you are. Do not get out of character because this is where the world try to get us in trouble. And they will play tit for tat to try to get you. They'll be like, I told you that the church folk, the church folk, that's them right there. See, I thought you were saying that they're they the main ones. That's what they, they be waiting on. That. They wait on that opportunity. They wait on that opportunity. Like, see, I told you. I told it. And it's like they, they wait on that golden chance. And they would try. They sit back and it's like they just wait. Like, I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them. And they would do stuff. It's like a trap. They do stuff and they sit and they wait and they wait to that golden moment. And when you when they catch you and they got me, say, I told you. And see, she always talking about that Jesus stuff. I told you, told you wouldn't say. They wait. And when they got you, they got you. Okay. Matthew 7, 20 through 21. Thus you will recognize them by the by their fruit. Not every oh, this is a good one. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. So this is what you have to be careful of. Those people that be trying you, they just waiting for those opportunities. And everybody just say, like we talked about last week, everybody saying they say, but this scripture right here shows you, everybody just saying, Lord, Lord, ain't making it in. All right. Second Corinthians 10, three through five. But though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Amen. And then I also want to talk about um, references to others not like um, not like for, for no apparent reason, just like Jesus, they just didn't like him. Didn't, like I say, a hit was put out on him as a baby, kill all the male babies. He wasn't even a month old, and they didn't like him. And then, like I said, they're not going to like us for no reason. Okay, now look at this. Jephthah sent messengers to the king of the Amorites saying, what do you have against me that you have come to fight against my land? He said, I ain't even do nothing to y'all. Why y'all? This is Judges 11 and 12. He said, why y'all don't like me? <laughs> Second Samuel 16 and 10. But the king replied, what do I have to do with your sons of Zariah? If curses be, be because the Lord told him, curse David, go curse him. But he can ask, why did you do this? Second Samuel 19, 22. Then David said, sons of Zariah, what did I do? Uh, why y'all why y'all adversaries coming against me? First Kings 17, 18. Oh, man of God said the woman to Elijah, what did I do to you? Why did you come? Why did you come to remind me of my iniquity and cause death to come upon my son? Second Kings um, 3.13, Elijah, however, said the king of Israel, what have we to do with each other? Go to the prophets of your father and your mother. Then Second Second Chronicles 35 and 21, but Nico sent messengers to him saying, what is the issue between me and you, O king of Judah? I didn't come against you today, but I am fighting against your another dynasty. Go tell God to hurry up and stop opposing us. Joel 3 and 4. Yes, what have we what what have you to do with me, O God, Tyre and Zidian, and all the coasts of the Philistines? Will you render and recompense us? Okay? Now this is what Jesus is telling us in 2 Timothy 3 and 12. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, you will be persecuted. John 7 and 7. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify against the works of the world. Hebrews 10 and 25. Stop neglecting to meet together out of habit, but encourage one another all the more so that you can draw strength from each other. Romans 3 and 23, all of everyone will fall short of the glory of God. So what this is saying is you have to come together to draw strength so you can be encouraged by each other. Okay. That is where you draw strength from when you assemble yourselves together. Okay. Because it, no matter what you do in this world, 
you will be disliked. Okay, people are not going to like you, period, in this world. Why? Because you represent, because we represent the Savior. They're, they're always, we're all, we're never going to be liked. Why? Because this, because we're in this world. And when Jesus was in this world, he came against the world. That is what he was saying. He said, the world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify against it. Understand it? He testified against the world. Look, listen to this. John 15, 18 through 22. This sums it all up. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of this world, listen to this, this right here going to bless you. If you were of this world, it would love you. So if people don't like you, that's a good thing. If, 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 if everybody's celebrating you, we have a problem. If everybody is celebrating you, they love you. Oh, you just wonderful. Oh, you just blessed. Oh, you just, oh my God, I just, oh, and everybody love you. Oh, we got, we got a huge problem. We have a problem. Listen to this. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of this world, because, but I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than its master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you because of my name. Because they do not know him who sent me. If everybody in this world loved the Lord and was sold out to God, oh, we wouldn't have no problem. We wouldn't have no problem. This would be a beautiful place. But if the world, if if if, if the world hate you, if, if you were up again, if the world um, hate you like they did those disciples. Oh, you're in good company. You're in good company. Listen to this. If you were of the world, they would love you because you're just like them. <laughs> if they loved us, we would be good because we would be just like them. Remember, we are royal priesthood. We're set apart. We're different. We're not supposed, we, we're supposed to be moving to a different beat, to a different drum. They're supposed to be looking at us like, what's wrong with them? Why they act like that? We're supposed to act different. We're supposed to talk different. We're not supposed to be like everybody else. We're supposed to stand out. They're supposed to be saying, oh, what's something different about her? Why she act like that? Why is she always looking like that? Oh, I'm supposed to be looking like that. I ain't supposed to be acting, acting and looking just like all the rest of y'all. If I do, it's a problem. You're supposed to be saying, oh, it's something different about her. You're supposed to be saying that. Oh, she act a little different. Yeah, I, I sure do. I should act a little different. I shouldn't be in everybody's face. I shouldn't be in everybody's conversation. I'm supposed to act different. I'm supposed to stand out. I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be like everyone. I shouldn't be in everybody's conversation and grinning in everybody's face. I'm a peculiar, I'm a, I'm a peculiar people. I'm a royal priesthood. I move different. I move in silence. You're not gonna know my every move. You're not gonna know everything I'm here to do next. That is how it is supposed to be with the children of God. We're chosen. We're different remnant. We don't move like everybody else. We're always on assignment. We're always one step ahead of the game at all times. At all times. James 4 and 4 says, do you not know that friendship with the world is enemy with God? Hmm. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enemy with God. Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend with the world makes himself an enemy with God. Powerful. Powerful. 
Because when God gave me this word, he said, tell them, because they got, they got to position themselves that it's okay to be different. Stop explaining everything about yourself. Stop explaining why you do this, why you act this way, why you got to eat by yourself, why you don't want to be, why you don't want to be having lunch with everybody, why you want to eat by yourself, why you're fasting, why you're doing this, why you do, stop explaining everything. Everybody ain't going to need an explanation. Why you didn't answer your phone because I didn't want to talk? Why you didn't call me back because I didn't want to call you back? Everybody doesn't deserve an explanation. You got at, at this point in at this point in your life, at this season in your life, and with what God is doing in you and through you, everybody don't get access to you right now. You got to understand where you are and where God is taking you. Everybody don't get access to you. Everybody don't, don't get the right to be in your circle right now. It's some people you got to drop off and block off. And then it's some people you need to unblock so they can see the blessings. Because all those people that called you church girl, too holy, too deep, and all these things and holy roller, now they need to see why. This is what all those titles got me. Okay? Super deep. Jesus Jr. All those titles, this is what those titles got me, where I am now. Okay? So these are some of the things that people need to see. All, all the things, so where, where we're going now, it's time to stop apologizing for the favor that's on your life. Stop apologizing for, for the favor and for what God is doing and making excuses. It is time now for people to see what God is doing in your life. Amen. It is time for people to see exactly what God is doing in your life and in this next season of your life. In this next season of your life. Amen. So right now, this is, I just want to share that little tidbit with you tonight. And I wanted to share something that God released. I actually released um, my book over the weekend. And I wanted to share a little snippet of that with you. I'm going to go to that now. I can...
So thank you again for joining tonight. And if you would like to purchase the book, I'm trying to find the, let me see the um, banner for the book. Let's see. There it is. Yes, if you would like to purchase the book, you can go to my cash app. But if you go there, make sure that you put your address um, in the little link so I can send it to you um, and I can drop it in the mail. But if you go to Abundant Faith, I'll bring it to church. But thank you for joining tonight. And I will be back on here on Monday again to share with you again whatever the lord gives me and thank you again for joining but that is my cash app if you would like to sow a seed into the word always accept those if you would like to do that or if you would like to purchase a book i will send it to you there as well god bless you all and thank you so much for joining in and have a wonderful night and i will see you there see you next monday love you guys god bless you